Hey, this is the first episode of a series where I create a robotic dog platform primarily using 3D printed parts so as to make it more accessible. We will start by experimenting a little with compliant joints, but we will soon scale up to a full leg and eventually the full four-legged robot. The focus of this episode begins with the mechanical development of the compliant joint. Then we will conclude with the controls development and finally a controls demo. What you're seeing now is a 3D model I made for the joint. I should note that throughout this entire process, I'm taking design cues and inspiration from James Bruton's Open Dog project for their mechanical design and Boston Dynamics Spot for their controls interface and abstractions. Let's take a look at the parts that I designed and printed. First, the leg. As you can see, there are two tabs on the end effector which have a magnet on either side. I will explain the magnets in the latter part of the video. Then we have the gear that the leg attaches to. The tab that protrudes is what's going to hold the Hall effect sensor. Again, this will be discussed in the latter part of the video. This is the gear that attaches to the servo. As you can tell by the difference in gear sizes, I'm attempting to double the torque out of the motor by gearing 2 to 1. And these are the spring arms, which act as a compliancy buffer. Finally, this is the servo housing and the main body that the joint moves relative to. Eventually, when we make a full leg, the servo body will just be attached to the end effector of another joint. The way that we achieve compliance is relatively simple. Basically, the end effector, aka the output leg, moves somewhat independently of the gear that it's attached to meaning you can technically push the leg and the gear won't move. When the leg moves independently of the large gear, it pushes against the spring, which applies more force proportional to the distance that it's stretched. Technically, we could just stop here and have the compliancy that we wanted, but the flaws of this approach become clear very quickly because you have to have quite a strong spring in order to even keep your end effector in the same general position. Also, I'm not quite sure what level of compliance I need as a bare minimum. Instead, this design goes one step further and adds a linear Hall effect sensor in between the tabs of the leg. The sensor detects the magnitude of the magnetic flux, which translates to the distance to the magnet. We can then use this sensor reading to drive the sensor towards or against the applied force and effectively give us software controlled compliance, which has the added benefit of continuing to keep track of our position. As you can see, a rudimentary compliance is achieved through the addition of a spring between the gear and the end effector. Now, let's take it a step further. In order to take this a step further, we should start by getting a better understanding of what the A1302 Hall Effect Sensor outputs. So let's start by wiring up an Arduino Nano to the Hall Effect Sensor. The sensor outputs a voltage proportional to the magnetic flux it detects, scaled relative to the voltage powering the sensor. So, we hook up the 3.3 volt pin and the ground pin to the sensor according to this pinout. Then, we wire up the third lead to an analog pin on the Arduino Nano so that we can read the output of the sensor. As you can see, the closer we bring the magnet to the sensor, the higher the voltage that the A1302 sensor outputs. Interestingly, when we flip the polarity of the magnet, the sensor output flips signs as well, which is a great feature of this linear Hall effect sensor since it means that we can encode the direction of force as well. <laughs> 
Now, let's hook up a servo to the setup and tie the output of the sensor to the input of the servo, which should result in a compliant lag. The code behind this is quite simple and it's linked in the description. All I'm doing here is replacing the sensor with another one whose leads I've extended so that the sensor can fit in the joint. As you can see, when I push the leg, the extrusions that house the magnet get closer to the Hall effect sensor, and the servo starts moving in the direction of the force that I'm applying. The end result is a compliance whose force and responsiveness I can adjust by dampening and amplifying the output of the sensor. In the next episode, I'll implement a filter over the output of the sensor in order to smooth it. Then, I'll add a calibration sequence for the sensor in order to make the joint's compliancy somewhat reliable. And finally, I'll add another joint to the end effector of this joint, which should give us an arm. I'll see you guys next week.